Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this talk, I will offer a different perspective on the sustainable development goal. I suggest that the fundamental cause of the environmental crisis is a way of knowing the world reality, which is radically different from the traditional methods and the Islamic method. And this is known as the Enlightenment of Europe, which is was a radical change in epistemology. Uh, Colin Turbane in Myth of Metaphor has said that prior to the Enlightenment, the metaphor of Mother Earth or Mother Nature captured the nearly universal symbiotic view of the Earth as a planet from which we derive enormous benefits and repay this uh, by protecting and uh, respecting the environment. But uh, after the Newtonian revolution, this was replaced by the idea of the universe as a machine, a dead thing to be used and exploited and controlled. Since the change of meaning of knowledge has led to the climate crisis, the only way to fix the problem is to again change the concept of knowledge. We must change our ways of knowing the world we know, live in, as well as our relationships to all of the creation of God. And this involves reversing the great transformation of European thought. Uh, a brief summary of the history corresponding to this outline is given in the next slide. The Enlightened project was launched when Christian factions warred each other with extreme violence for centuries in Europe. European intellectuals saw that it was necessary to rebuild uh, knowledge about society on secular grounds, so uh, on which would be equally acceptable to all religions to avoid religious persecution by one faction or the other. This meant building knowledge on objective grounds and using logic which would be equally acceptable to all parties. So intuitions, emotions, subjective personal experiences were rejected as a basis for knowledge. They could not be used to create consensus. This meant that traditional inherited wisdom and the collective lessons of historical experience were discarded as being faulty and unreliable, and all human knowledge was to be built on new foundations. Of knowledge is not only different from uh, traditional Christianity, but also from all religious traditions, as well as the knowledge, concept of knowledge in Islam. Islam takes knowledge very seriously, and indeed it's central to the message of Islam. Uh, mankind stood on the verge of a catastrophe when Allah Ta'ala revealed his final message uh, 14 and a half centuries ago. God gave us knowledge which we did not have. And this knowledge changed the course of history. Uh, the foundation of all knowledge in Islam is to be built on the knowledge revealed by God to mankind. Muhammad made a clear distinction between useful and useless knowledge. And he made dua seeking useful knowledge. And he made dua seeking protection from useless knowledge. So how can we tell the difference? Uh, even this knowledge has been lost under the influence of Western epistemology, which makes no such distinction, or rather makes the distinction along rather different lines. The fundamental error of Western epistemology is that knowledge cannot be built from scratch starting from zero. If you start from zero, you always get zero. <clears throat> Building knowledge must be done on pre-existing foundations. Allah Ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the names of things and this is the foundation for all human knowledge. This knowledge of the names is built into our hearts and this creates categories upon which we build knowledge. Without these pre-existing categories of thought, it is impossible to make sense of our life experiences. So when the uh, European intellectuals sought to build knowledge from zero, they actually made a lot of assumptions borrowed from Christianity as well as other ideas from their intellectual tradition, but without explicitly recognizing these. So these hidden foundations of Western knowledge are the source of our current problems.
The secular concept of knowledge led to many serious defects. <clears throat> knowledge was assumed to be true and justifiable. So if I claim something to be knowledge, then I must be able to offer objective proof, which is equally acceptable to all and of provide certainty. So in the terms of question of does God exist, we cannot have knowledge of this uh, because we cannot provide 100% proof which convinces us all. And so implicitly this leads to a rejection of God and this rejection has serious epistemological consequences. As we the consequences are this universe was created by an accident. There is no purpose in the creation of the universe. Life itself emerged by a sequence of accidents. Human beings emerged by evolution from other animals because there is no creator, so there is no special creation of humans. So we are just another type of animal. Our society is just a jungle of cutthroat competition. And there is only one moral law, which is the survival of the fittest. Purpose of our life is, because it ends at death, is to pursue pleasure, power, anything that we desire in this world. And life itself has no meaning like the life of the animals. Toxic foundations lead to a number of conclusions uh, about how we should build society. So society should build on hedonism, where every person is pursuing pleasure, power, and wealth. Individualism, everyone is alone, dies alone. And so uh, we distinguish ourself from society. In fact, one can say that society does not exist. There's only individuals. Uh, the war of all against all, as one of the philosophers put it. It means that uh, we should be selfish. There is no point in putting uh, anybody's taking care of others. Uh, we must put ourselves in front of all others. And the society is a jungle of competition driven by the survival of the fittest. Uh, so the environment, cons environmental crisis and natural consequences of these principles because we're only concerned about ourselves. We're not concerned about the future when we will be dead. And these principles continue, be to, continue be to be taught as basis for Western social sciences and especially economics but they are disguised and cloaked in mathematics, so it's not easily uh, comprehensible as to what we are assuming. There is no doubt about climate change. There's a massive number of unprecedented weather events and uh, unprecedented maxima, maximum heat in maximum um, melting of the ice caps, uh, hurricanes, floods, tsunamis, acid rain, only the blind would uh, refuse to see the evidence for climate change. Nonetheless, there are systematic efforts being made to deny climate change and to block attempts to solve the problem. Why is that? Why can't people see that we? it is our collective need to prevent the climate crisis? For this problem is universal adoption of Western epistemology because Western educational system are in place all over the world and they teach us all this uh, toxic epistemology. Uh, Western uh, society developed after they adopted these principles and so they sought pleasure, power and profits all over the world without any concern for others, leading to the genocide of millions of uh, tribes in Africa and in uh, South and North America. Even the names of the nations that have been destroyed have not been survived. And uh, this is currently on display by Israel in terms of the cruelty and barbarity with which they are uh, killing Palestinians. So the rejection of intuition, subjective experience, emotion, tradition, spirituality as basis for knowledge leads to this computer-like calculation of efficiency without any moral or emotional concerns. The global conquest and colonization by the West has led to the spread of these ideas uh, in all of the, uh, over all of the globe. So if life is all about pursuit of pleasure, power, and profits without any concern for others, without any concern of what happens after I die, then what does it matter if the planet gets destroyed if I'm not there? So climate change Actually, the way of thinking of these people who are in, uh, brainwashed by Western epistemology is that if uh, people are concerned about climate change, then they will block us from doing things which are causing, uh, giving us profits, but causing more climate change. So the 
uh, strategy is to use greenwashing to improve the image to make the people think that we are uh, climate conscious and doing things while without changing any goals without changing our goals which remain hidden and so basically the question is that you can't do minor modifications you have to change the purpose for of our lives in order to create methods which will actually lead to genuine change and that is difficult to do in light of this analysis we understand the sdgs as a form of greenwashing that is we make mega projects and business appear to be environment friendly but not to address the root causes of the climate change a lot of sincere people who believe the false promises and premises of greenwashing and sdgs and therefore support it and therefore they are doing a lot of genuine good projects but ultimately you can't fix the problem without fixing the cause solutions cannot be found at the level where the problems appear the problem is the enlightenment project rejection of tradition intuition spirit and the heart and uh, to counter it we have to create the ghazali project which involves rejecting the enlightened project and the whole structures of knowledge created by it instead we have to rebuild all of this new knowledge on the islamic epistemological foundations this is parallel to the enlightenment which rejected all past knowledge and rebuilt knowledge from scratch but for us uh, we don't uh, aim to start from zero simply to rebuild starting on the islamic intellectual tradition which has been discarded for the moment in the mainstream at least it arises especially in context of climate change that we would like to have universal appeal not appeal just to the muslims so uh, why use islamic why not use some universal foundations so there are multiple answers for this one is that islam is the deen of fitra or nature and so islamic foundations for knowledge have universal appeal because these principles have been built into the hearts but this requires careful crafting of the principles uh, some uh, the, the second point is that you can't build knowledge in zero so you have to build on some foundations so where are we going to get these foundations from uh, the set of principles which currently people are trying to do are all built on enlightenment ideals and therefore fundamentally flawed so basically we need to start from universal principles aligned with islam for example generosity cooperation social responsibility these three are uh, commonly accepted finally the idea that our actions are a reward in and of themselves uh, they will be rewarded in the akhirah or uh, according to islam but also good pro social behavior brings its own reward because our hearts are built to be pleased when we do something which is good so perfectly we have to use multiplex knowledge a concept that has been revived by rajab shanturk and is based on the islamic tradition and there are multiple layers of knowledge so we can uh, layer our um, foundations on a universal principles on abrahamic principles to appeal to all three revealed religions as well as islamic which would be narrower and all three would be in correspondence with each other we have common grounds in logic uh, for sustainable development that the earth sustains our lives and we must protect and preserve it and this is captured in the old metaphor of mother earth and the new metaphor of gaia the living planet and we based on simple logic that this planet is a trust which was given to us we don't own it and we have we have temporary possession we should pass it on to the future generations in a condition better than how we found it so how we can rebuild knowledge on islamic foundations uh, we can call this the ghazali project which has three uh, which has multiple components first is to understand that the universe was created so someone must have created it and if it was created then that gives purpose and meaning to our short lives and then we can define useful knowledge as that kind of knowledge which helps us to achieve our purpose or our goals and useless knowledge distracts and blocks us from recognizing and achieving our goals so 
uh, the critical question, the place where education must start is the question of identity. Who are we? Why are we here? And these questions are not addressed in Western epistemology because uh, they cannot be answered by science. Another component is to see through the, the apparently brilliant structures of Western knowledge and realize that they are built on toxic foundations. And once we have this realization, then we have to revive the whole structure of knowledge by rebuilding on Islamic foundations. So these are the components of the Ghazali. How is the Ghazali project to be implemented? The critical instrument of change is education. And uh, we must start by making character building the core of our educational curriculum and see this post for uh, a history of how a character building, which used to be central to the Western curriculum as well, was removed from it over the 20th century. Then, uh, obviously, the first question which any knowledge must answer must start with the purpose of life. And uh, <clears throat> while evading the question directly, Western education provides an indirect false answer that life is about pursuit of pleasure, power, profits, and uh, uh, being admired, status, etc. Uh, but none of these are correct ideas. Basically, Western social science teaches us certain principles on which to build society, but these principles are very toxic. They build, uh, instead of building a society, they build a jungle. And so rebuilding the social sciences will teach us how to build society according to Islamic ideals. And this is the urgent need of our times. Legitimate objection is, won't this take too long? Uh, well, that's quite true that we don't know how long it will take, but the other avenues that we are being currently explored have no chance of success. So this probability has a chance of success. It is not clear that we can prevent a climate crisis, uh, but making preparations for a catastrophe will be useful even if it doesn't happen. And all is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of critical to making preparations for a catastrophe is to build local self-sufficient communities which can provide for all their needs in terms of energy and food. And this is also aligned with the teachings of Islam, which put a lot of emphasis on taking care of our neighbors and taking care of our own selves and being self-sufficient. And these preparations also involve living simple lifestyles which are central to Islam and rejecting the israf and tabzir which is at the heart of capitalism. Basically, overproduction and overconsumption are critical to capitalism, and they are the central cause of the climate crisis that we are seeing. So we have to revert to simple lifestyles, reject the idea of economic growth, and instead focus on degrowth. And how can we do all that? How can we create social change? Uh, that's a long topic for on which I have a separate lecture, which is linked here. So we are only responsible for doing the fighting, the good fight, making the struggle. Outcomes are not in our hands, and the outcomes will be seen in the Akhirah. Allah Ta'ala has promised, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبَلَنَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So if we try to do good and we work to uh, please Allah, then Allah Ta'ala will guide us to his pathways. So let us end with the prayer. O oh Allah, enlighten our hearts with the nur of knowledge from yourself and fill our hearts with your love. Allow us to see the, what needs to be done and especially those actions which will be most pleasing to you and show us what is the best of the deeds and give us the courage and capabilities to perform these deeds. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun wa Salamun al-Mursaleen wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.